G'day, this is Ben Bischoff here, um, Australian Kayak Bisho. Um, been paddling the Vortex VTX 560 now for probably two and a half years roughly. Um, figured it's about time I did a review. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of uh, information out there for the Vortex Kayaks. Uh, Alright, so VTX 560, 560 is for 5.6 metres long or 560 centimetres. Uh, made in South Africa, uh, not currently in manufacturing. I um, believe there's some issues with the uh, people that were manufacturing for Vortex um, and they're wanting to receive a ship but like I said Trent, Trent's going to answer some of those questions for us. So stability. So this is the sort of stability on the over 100 kilo. Spin around easily on this kayak and just sit side saddle however you want. Um, just make sure I don't get snagged on the reef while I'm here. Um, so rod holder wise so you got Two angled out and two upright. Um, so a couple of storage, a couple of running. Some people do run another one straight down the centre at the back. Um, that's personal preference. So low well. Um, so when I've got low bait, um, basically there's a cap in here, unscrew off the top. It allows water to come in when you're paddling. Underneath is a uh, venturi, and it allows the water to circulate. So you can see that's um, some bait. Oh. I might have to go. Um, yep, and then here's your other dry hatch. You can see there's a massive amount of storage on this kayak. The rest of this review I'll uh, probably do off the water. Um, but yeah, I just thought it'd be uh, good to see how it shows on the water. Okay, over the last couple of years I've been asked um, a lot of different questions um, around the Vortex fishing kayak. Uh, decided to make contact with Trent, the owner and brains behind the Vortex uh, fishing kayak. Uh, Trent's kindly agreed to answer some questions we've gathered over the last couple of years. Um, so following that catch up with Trent, we'll uh, jump in and run through my personal opinion on the Vortex kayaks and um, you know, the pros, cons and some common things to look for if you're looking uh, to buy a second hand Vortex. G'day Trent, thanks so much for making the time to chat. Um, it's really good to meet the, the brains behind the product. I personally have really enjoyed my VTX 560 as a fishing platform, uh, so I wanted to pass on my personal thanks to you uh, for bringing the VTX 560 to the market. So I thought we'd start out with um, you giving us a brief summary in you know how Vortex came about. Hi Ben, thanks for reaching out and happy to answer a couple of questions regarding Vortex. I'm really pleased to hear that you've enjoyed your VTX 560. Vortex came about because I believed I could design a better fishing kayak than what was on offer in the market. I'm a self-confessed water junkie and avid paddler, surfer, spear fisherman and fisherman and I've been f racing various crafts competitively over the last 20 years. I wanted to incorporate some of the latest flat water, wild water and surf ski technology into a fishing kayak design. A huge amount of time and effort went into the research and gathering feedback to better understand common problems face facing fishing kayaks. And the goal was to find design solutions to seamlessly integrate the most useful elements from a number of different craft uh, into a fishing kayak. I didn't want to simply copy existing designs. Um, I, would, I wanted to rather develop a brand new innovation in a unique kayak. At the time, I contacted some fishing kayak manufacturers with my ideas, however, I didn't receive a positive response. I believe my design fundamentals were strong and the kayak had a lot of potential, so I didn't let this get in my way and eventually teamed up with an established surf ski company based in South Africa to design the plug and mold of the first Vortex kayak. There's certainly some uh, new innovations on the VTX 560. Um, are you able to give us a brief history on the first build to the, the last build? My areas of expertise lie in design, marketing and sales, that's, that's where I've had my experience, rather than composite manufacturer and running a composite factory. With this in mind, the agreement we had in place was for the surf ski company to manufacture the craft on an outsourced basis, while I concentrated on the sales and marketing for Vortex. The first few kayaks were manufactured by this third party and were really great in my opinion. 
Uh, the design had a sweet spot between speed and stability, strength and weight, and included a whole lot of new innovation like larger hatches, comfortable seated positions, reverse venturi live wells, uh, etc. Et Unfortunately, the third party decided the fishing ski did not fit in with their manufacturing strategy, and they cancelled the contract at that point. At the time, we could not find another suitable partner to manufacture and had a big decision to make. The next 40 skis uh, fully believed in the product and made the decision to jump in the deep end and set up a factory in order to manufacture the kayaks myself. I quit my corporate job, uh, rented out my house and moved back in with my folks, with my, my trusting wife and newborn in tow and uh, went from earning a very comfortable salary to really nothing at all. We started out with great hope, uh, but unfortunately with the new brand, we could just not sell enough skis into the local market to make our business model sustainable. And we could not cover the large fixed overheads involved in running a factory with a single mold and design. We re-looked the outsourcing scenario and found great synergies with a reputable company um, that had been in the business for over 40 years, based in Hillcrest in South Africa. So after 12 months, we closed the factory and entered into an, an agreement with them to manufacture the Vortex fishing skis. For the last 40 skis, uh, at the same time, uh, we had just secured our first Australian order through our new agents there. Knowing the overseas market is much more demanding in terms of quality standards, I was actually hugely relieved that we had partnered with a manufacturing um, yeah, with a manufacturing company that had vast experience in exporting. We completed a comprehensive handover and made several improvements to the manufacturing process based on input from our new partners. Unfortunately, we were not aware that this company was struggling with a few of its own internal problems at the time, and um, despite our best efforts to manage this, the circumstances directly impacted the quality of the output we received. Uh, shortly after the first Australian order was delivered, we were notified that the company was liquidating and would no longer be manufacturing boats. We were therefore sadly not in a position to fulfill the second order we received from our Australian agent. Wow, what a roller coaster ride for you and your family. Certainly some, um, some big sacrifices you and your family have made uh, to bring the Vortex kayak to the market. Um, so. Just a few issues that um, with the kayak that we've seen uh, around build quality um, in Australia. Um, are you able to give us some feedback um, on this and any other common uh, issues buyers should be aware of? Uh, some of the issues being, you know, seam cracks, um, the gel coat um, cracking um, and in places coming apart um, and the seat section uh, being a little bit, uh, I guess, of the weaker point of the kayak. We did not have a great entry into the Australian market with quality issue concerns such as those you have detailed above uh, on our first order. This placed a lot of stress on our agents in Australia and was a less than ideal start uh, to Vortex foray into the international market. However, we tried our best to work with our agents to address the problems that occurred and provided, you know, obviously a lot of support and funding to complete as many of the necessary repairs as possible. Our agents were also open about these issues with customers and I know several of the boats were like heavily discounted to compensate for the problems that had been. Uh, that had been. Luckily also fiberglass is completely repairable so all of these problems could be repaired by a composite professional. Uh, the points you've detailed above cover the most common problems we've had. It's also important to note that many of the boats were of a completely acceptable quality and the people who bought these were very happy. Thanks, Trent. Um, so what advice would you give people looking to purchase a Vortex kayak, given that they are likely to be a second-hand kayak at the moment? It's a fantastic ski and design, so I would say go for it. Just uh, inspect the kayak and be aware that the finishing might not be of the top quality. Uh, these are, however, mostly cosmetic blemishes and do not impact the kayak's performance. I get a lot of questions about uh, from people asking what the situation is with Vortex. Um, so are they manufacturing? Um, are they available in New Zealand? And where can I buy one in Australia? 
With the depressed markets worldwide and the various COVID restrictions at the moment, the businesses on hold currently uh, continue to look for other manufacturing options within SA and actually elsewhere. But at this stage, you cannot uh, purchase a new Vortex kayak, unfortunately. So Trent, uh, what does the future of Vortex look like? The business is on hold from a manufacturing point of view at the moment, but all the elements are in place to continue once we've identified a suitable manufacturing part, uh, partner and the market is in a better state. I believe strongly that we have a winning design with the VTX 560 ski, but the challenge to date has been to manufacture it to a consistently acceptable quality. I also have a lot of uh, new innovation ideas for future models and further improvements uh, to an already great design. I'm therefore really hopeful that we will find the right manufacturing partner in the future and you'll see a new and improved uh, Vortex Craft on the water soon. Hey Trent, I really appreciate you taking the time to answer the questions for us today. Um, what's the best method um, for people to contact you? Um, if they have any questions or would like some answers or give some feedback on the VTX 560. It's a pleasure, Ben. Uh, thanks for pulling together the review. Uh, you can message on the Facebook page or, or my email address. I'm sure you'll put it in the, the notes below. Thanks again, Trent. Um, we'll leave your contact details on the Facebook link in the description below. Uh, so there is also the Vortex Fishing Family uh, Facebook page. Um, lots of um, knowledgeable people on there that can help with um, any concerns or um, installation queries of like installing sounders, you know, different tips and ideas as well as some pretty cool fishing reports from uh, around the world uh, from all places where we, um, where we have Vortex fishing kayaks. So head over there, I'll put the link to that also in the description. Okay, so in front of the kayak, uh, you can see that the, the nose is quite rounded. Um, it's quite narrow at the front, but uh, widens quite quickly. Uh, and here we have the two drain holes, so this one is for the outer hole. This one's for the inner hole. Uh, hard handle, um, which is quite good, uh, nice and solid to grip on. Also acts as a bit of a barrier when you flip it upside down to drain it. So you see it rests on, it can rest on the, uh, the hard handle rather than on the nose of your kayak. Um, the other good thing about this is, you know, sort of limited snags up the front here for your lines to get caught on. Um, so then as we move forward through the kayak, yeah, you've got your um, your paddle holder here, um, so just a bungee cord, a bit of rubber um, and a bit of a protective layer over the top there, matting, um, just so it doesn't scratch up the surface of your kayak. Um, this here, what you see here is um, basically something I've made up, which is um, to allow, um, if I come off in the surf, this thing comes off and the kayak goes that way and that pulls the nose towards me. Um, so it's just a mod I made after the fact. Um, it's quite simple. A little grip here, some bungee cord, and then this goes off. Off to my paddle, which I've just knotted around. Nice and simple. Like most kayakers, we're all kind of innovators, I guess. <laughs> um, righty -o. so then we move down to the side. So you see the hole is, um, I don't know if you get the best shot, it's quite nicely rounded so that um, you know water just runs off nice and easily. Um, coming up to the front, um, now, some good and bad, um, it is a fixed hinged um, hatch unlike other kayaks which tend to use like a velcro um, strip, makes it kind of uh, flexible. Um, this one is fixed so um, obviously this bounces off the top here so I've just put on a little support there just to Pushing that so when it comes over it doesn't impact the lid too much. Um, a couple of things that have happened to other guys is the glue um, has come come away so they've actually screwed the hinges on uh, using 316 marine grade stainless steel uh, bolts um, to hold that in place so your choice um, so far two and a half years mine's still going strong. Um, these here, like your uh, surf leashes on surfboards, recessed into the hull again, minimise the amount of um, 
protruding edges on your kayak um, and this is a velcro so you can just adjust that you can stick it over on the other side depending on your preference of which side you like to uh, pick your kayak up to drag it into the beach so this is typically where you pick it up here tilt from the side walk down to the beach um, rightio so rudders so you see here pull this pin out and this basically uh, your foot peg slides up and down uh, to adjust to your side uh, your your leg length um, uh, the, the length of this cable obviously depending on how far forward you like your foot um, I basically have mine so my foot is running parallel up and down whether that's right or wrong not a hundred percent but it works for me um, and nice and simple tie it off here um, the early models had the um, had this bracket on the inside so I'd imagine that would pose an issue uh, in the case where the securing bolts come loose and you need to take this bracket off to tighten them up I'm um, not sure how you'd access that on the inside um, so good call on moving it to this side um, I think that was a very early model that had on the other side the demo models um, one issue I have seen mine's um, behaving quite well but uh, you can see this angle here there are some kikes that seem to come out at a, at a stronger angle up around here so when it comes out it's rubbing on this area here and they're finding that this cable is fraying a bit um, so the simplest solution is just replace your cable it'll last you a couple of years at least um, not too much of a big drama and eventually it's going to wear down anyway into that groove um, but this you can see there's a bit of a tube there so this tube is basically one complete tube from the front to the back of the kayak so that um, if water goes in there comes out the hole in the other end and vice versa doesn't end up in your hole so um, if this comes out that's a point of, um, of where water can get into the main hull which has been seen on uh, all models of kayaks I guess over the years once they get a bit older um, right yeah then we've got our middle grab handles um, nice strong rigid um, rigid handle so that's if you want to pick it up with two hands and carry it down to the beach or uh, manhandle it up onto the roof however you load your kite I tend to use a loading bar um, yep okay so moving on to the um, onto the main hatch here I'll go through the dimensions I've got a bit of a, a separate screenshot um, but I'm six foot uh, six two roughly um, and I fit very comfortably in this I uh, have had lower back issues in the past um, but this seating position seems to be very comfortable for me no issues on the water so the main hatch um, like I said carbon fiber nice little um, hardened bit of uh, plastic there so you can you know you can cut bait uh, without damaging the lid um, quite a large hatch obviously which you'll see in a second and I'll put some dimensions um, up a bit later on um, I went with the Garmin 5 CV sounder um, just run a sounder GPS um, quick draw contours not um, preloaded maps um, and that was what I believe was um, for the money and it fitted fit the hatch perfectly so I couldn't have gone any bigger I don't think with any other product that I could find um, I lent towards Garmin over Lawrence just personal preference um, some things that I prefer with Garmin um, but you do 5CV you don't have the preloaded map so you map as you go um, but um, I'll put up a link in the top right hand corner if you'd like to see how I installed that um, fish one all right so um, this is a strap you'd put on to go through the surf it's hold it down really tight really simple pretty common amongst most kayaks these days um, simply pull that cable out and then you can sit back and just use the bungee cord for the rest of your trip um, nice quick open um, still holds it secure enough if you flip it you're not going to lose stuff um, so there you go big hatch so I'll give you an idea there's a meter tape Sealed. Um, if I sealed that properly, then it would be. Uh, but effectively, it's a sealed uh, compartment. 
and I've gone with the FPV power, um, 17 power kayak battery, which FPV power not specifically for kayakers. So what I found is this, these little washers here were glued on and this was just glued in. Um, it wasn't strong enough to hold rods through the surf um, and I lost a couple of, basically this fell off a couple of times. Um, tried reinforcing and putting strong glue and all that and it didn't work so what I've done since is added two 316 marine grade stainless steel bolts with a nut on the other side. Um, so the other thing I did at the same time was upgrade the Velcro to slightly larger Velcro. Uh, the original ones were quite thin and a um, uh, little lower quality. Um, so massive fish hatch, fit all my rods, you know, I think I've had up to about nine fishing rods of friends at done rod storage um, and pull it out pretty much tangle free every time um, and the good news is, is your rods all sit up by shame. So rods sit there, so you can see there's plenty of room in there for your fish to go underneath. So I didn't have to go and cut myself over there, but I run in a transducer um, just for keeping my wife simple, out of the way, keeping my it's there, it's there permanently. Okay, so we've got two rod holders, 50 degree angle, uh, inbuilt rod holders, which goes with the, the design of the kayak, trying to minimise the amount of uh, snag points on your kayak, so they're inbuilt, very strong. Um, they've held up to some good fish so far. Flush mount um, bungee cord for the rear hatch, which I double up for leash holders. There are two more rod holders at the back, which is you can use for trolling if you like. They have put them at, I think, a 10 degree angle. Um, but I tend to just use them for storage rather than trolling. Two rear hatches, um, both again carbon fibre lids. Um, Fixed hinges, same as the other ones, same issues that the guys have had with they've bolted these hinges on. So I won't go back into that. Um, same tie down to hold them down nice and sturdy. And the same bungee cord just to keep them down while you're on the water. This is your rear storage. Um, so you can see have got a raised edge here which helps get you a seal around the edge with your foam. Um, not 100% waterproof. However, I don't think any hatches in this design will ever be 100% waterproof. Some guys have uh, thickened up the foam to try and get a better seal. Um, ultimately, I haven't had too many issues with it. Yeah, I do get water in them, but I use water top containers, so I just assume that I'm going to have water in the kayak. So, um, one thing to remember, on the water, it's inevitable things will get wet. So, just prepare for them to get wet, and then you're not going to be let down. So, this hatch here is for basically your tackle and things like that um, and this one here I got the live well option um, so you can see nice big hatch this piping here effectively is how the water gets in and out of the kayak drain plug at the bottom what I did was add a little bit of cord just so I don't lose it um, I know a few people lost that little rubber bung so future design um, idea there that could um, make that a little bit simpler a uh, little bit of bungee to stop bait getting in there um, so effectively to get the live well in operation we need to do unscrew that start paddling and basically water will fill up in here and suck out through here pretty sure that's the way it's worked might have that backwards but I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong um, so some of the issues the guys have had is that this pipe here is uh, basically too low in the water line and they get water in here regardless even when that's supposed to be shut off to the ocean and not able to get water in. So what they've done is just added a similar setup to this over here, put a plug cap on the top, done. The main area that we ended up finding that we well, getting water in was through the live well so you can imagine you fill the live well up with water and you start bouncing around that sloshes around and goes up and down the sides. So the boxes were not very well, or they didn't seem sealed at all at the top, they were glued in, you know, quite well and secure, uh, but not sealed up in the top edge of the But this edge was not There is, basically, it's not sealed. 
head down towards the next part of the kayak. So this is a railblazer mount that I've got. Um, it's basically just a camera boom for a GoPro. Stick it out on the side. Um, yeah, I tend to use the one up the front these days, just on a suction cap. Just it's one less thing to worry about in the back here. Um, originally, there was bungee cord running across here, uh, which is basically so you can put extra gear on there. Um, I don't use it. Um, I don't store anything above the top of the kayak, out on the water, other than my fishing rods. So I tend to leave it like that. Um, yeah, so you could use these as rod leash points. Um, up to you. So um, you can see the shape of the hole as we move back. Um, it's quite wide down the middle. And when you get to the back, it's sort of nice, fat, stubby. Um, I think this is to add extra strength along with the recess in here, which is recess also keeps all this stuff as low to the hull as possible, which prevents. Um, so one issue that was had is this screw here, um, and I will go and grab a screwdriver in a minute. But what was effectively happening is there's no, there was no support underneath this carbon fibre plate. So you tighten this up and it just pushed down eventually um, putting a lot of stress on this thread like a spring almost trying to pull it back up um, so um, and sometimes pulling out what we call a thread so in the glass so, and again we come down the back and we've got another hard handle um, so this one's not really high enough to uh, protect here unless you're laying fairly flat um, but it's a nice strong handle and I actually pull my kayak out of the surf from the back um, on some recommendations of some guns down the, the Gold Coast aka canster um, pull it backwards um, you pull your rudder out of the sand straight away and it's easy to run up the beach without your rudder digging in I'll show you is just undo this so one thing that's happened is these covers have come off before um, for some guys and um, obviously losing the cover plate on your rudder and the hold down screw is not the greatest idea so that's basically what it looks like under the cover so I try and keep this fairly well lubricated the whole time so what was happening is this holds the rudder in so this nut is holding your rudder from the bottom um, I think it's 20 mil tube stainless tube comes up into here um, but this cover here screws in here so it was actually pulling that threaded piece out thread suit I think it's called out and um, causing the rudder cover just to come completely off in the surf and, and go missing. So um, what you can see is there's this little plate here which is, uh, was made by the guys and um, sold them in Australia um, and basically just to put a bit extra support over the top of this plate so it's not pulling everything on there. Um, I haven't had any issues with it but I didn't want to have issues so one thing I did myself was add this little sleeve so um, you can see that just prevents that cover from, from being pulled down too far and basically turning that into a big spring um, so as you screw it in you'll see I still get a little bit of flex but um, only enough to until I hit that sleeve and it stops that from basically pulling up on that screw and pulling that out so it's basically compressing that little sleeve which takes that spring out of it I guess um, so that's a, a, probably a fix I would do straight away if the kayak you've got hasn't got it get that one done so you'll see the they call them chimes so they've got hard chimes so basically soft chime would be a more curved edge and you know the curve might start here and finish here so you only have this much um, material in the water typically um, hard chimes basically bring this angle tighter gives you more surface area in the water and that's where it gets its stability from so these are your venturis for your foot wells um, so how this works water runs over the top as it runs over the top it kind of creates like a little vacuum um, and pulls the water out so they work really effectively and then the reverse venturi so this is the uh, live well so water gets pushed in there and as it comes over it creates that low pressure and sucks out that side it's that really solid carbon fibre um, rudder and your 
law and protect us. One thing I have noticed by the way, you can see there's a little bit of play in it. I was right in the water and I could hear a squeaking noise um, and it happened to be that was rubbing on it. So something just to be mindful of. It's just easy enough just to pull it out, keep it away from there. Um, but basically your line hits that, runs over the top and off it goes. I'm going to talk a little bit about maintenance and um, things to look at with the main hull before the last part of the boat. Um, these things are made lightweight and uh, to be as light as they can so the fiberglass is quite thin um, and on manufacturing to keep that weight down. So um, the other thing is this is a 5.6 metre long kai. I'm 100, 105 kilos thereabouts um, and you sit right in the centre of this kai. So picture five and a half meters 100 kilo in the middle there's a lot of stress on the center of this bike so just be aware of that when you're transitioning through surf and um, if you're buying off a, kayak, a second hand kayak try and get an idea of where they've used it if they've used it in big surf start looking in the center of the kayak for any issues um, which i'll go through a couple in a minute so the only place i've had i guess an issue is is like i said before the center of the kayak probably the weakest point of the kayak. Um, they have tried to strengthen it a fair bit from what I can tell, um, but inevitably, um, you know, if we don't, um, if we don't sort of keep an eye on it, um, it could come up and bite us. So, so yeah, um, this is the seam of the kayak, um, and I actually had a along this seam when I bought it, um, and I knew that I bought it with it. Um, you could squeeze it like this, and you could see a line basically doing this in the middle so uh, originally I just uh, I think I just resined over the top I didn't actually glass it so that come back and, and haunted me just recently um, and it started to show that crack again so this time I sent that right back run a couple of bits of glass over the top some flow coat and fattened it up up the top here just so it was a bit stronger um, and as you can see nice and strong um, so this is a point where there has been issues um, on a few kayaks. Um, when I say a few kayaks, you know, some guys have had worse issues, some guys have had minor issues. Um, I think, um, you know, that there have been a few that have been quite bad, um, but some of them, I think majority of people are enjoying their kayak and, you know, happy with how it's performing. One of my friends has had a couple of issues with his kayaks, um, or his kayak, sorry. Um, so one was a major split across here and across here um, and near kind of come in half I guess um, again right on this point here which is I believe my my personal opinion is that's the most vulnerable point how you strengthen that more I have no idea <laughs> um, but it's it's something to be aware of so looking for a kite a vortex if you go along and tap your kite like this you'll feel if it's soft or it's not right or at least look at these areas for um, cracks and splits um, there will be flex in the hull just because it's designed thin um, so the other issue he had was his was um, and effectively it started around here and the seam split all the way down to about here so what we believe the issue was there is um, on the top of uh, here when there was a look like a surface crack but um, what we found is the fiber the fibers of the fiberglass weren't uh, they were still dry so that to me indicated that the resin hadn't got through um, into the fibers when they vacuumed um, when they vacuumed them as part of the manufacturing process so that basically um, and the, the other part was it was quite thin at the front end of that seam um, the layer was lucky to be a mill thick so I think that's just purely a manufacturing issue um, something that can definitely be worked on in the future to make it better. Uh, ultimately, it cost, I think, I don't know, it was like three or four hundred dollars to do that fix for him. He was back on the water within a week. Um, and I did that in my garage. Might have even been 250, I can't remember, but I, there'll be a link up in that top um, to that video of the repair um, of his bike. Um, so, um, some of the other issues have been, you know, like delamination. So, that's where that top surface, you know, just comes away. Um, that's just purely around the manufacturing. Um, easily to identify, if you start tapping a kayak, you'll hear the sound. Um, so just look for that. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to go into every single issue that's been on these kayaks, but what I do want to do is arm you with the knowledge of how to look at any issues related to them. 
I think the majority of people that have a Vortex are very happy with the product. Um, there's a handful that are not very happy and rightfully so because I had some, um, some decent issues with the manufacturing. Um, but at the end of the day it's fiberglass and you can repair it quite easily, uh, in my opinion. Okay, so that wraps up the review. It's, uh, it's quite a long review. Um, so I won't go into any more detail um, on video. I'll, I'll populate the description with some dimensions, lengths, uh, with all the other different bits and pieces, um, as well as some, um, some good links to obviously Trent's contact details, Facebook page links. Um, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this, um, please give it a like, give it a subscribe, you know, all the typical um, scenario with YouTube, um, it's appreciated. Um, and if you have got any questions, please, please just ask. Um, leave a comment below. I usually get back to you if you leave a comment within a day or two. Um, so, uh, yeah, let me know what you need and I'll uh, do my best to help uh, and try and get you the answers you need. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you found it enjoyable.